and welcome to my latest cleaning video. So um, I have bought not too many books over the last month because most of my time has been spent with that massive pan collection. So I've not really had a chance to buy too much. However, a few bits and pieces that I bought before then and a few bits that I've had my eye on have turned up and um, that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So without further ado then, this shouldn't hopefully be an hour long video, but you never know. A <laughs> um, couple of quite interesting bookmarks, first of all. Um, this is a Penguin one, and it's for Ernest Hemingway. And uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, Penguin uh, republished all of the Ernest Hemingway books in sort of uniform uh, jackets. And uh, I'm a real fan of those editions. And this is just like a little uh, promotional bookmark for back in back in the day there, about 50 years ago now. So very nice. I haven't got you know, dozens of Penguin bookmarks, but I've got a few that I, I do really like. Also, um, part of the pan collection, this this bookmark turned up. This is uh, the News of the World, Britain's leading newspaper. And this is just a bookmark that turned up in another one of my old uh, my old books. Um, so pretty good. And, you know, really nice, interesting old bookmarks I do tend to keep. Um, so I've got a few of those. Maybe I'll dig them all out one day. Um, now, the next thing was a little parcel that I got from uh, uh, America. So I've got my friend Gary to send these over to me. So the postage from the eBay dealer who was selling these Renegade books was extortionate. So I got them sent to New York and then uh, Gary sent them over to me, which was sort of the uh, the best way around it. Um, so I am trying to put together a set of these Renegade books and they are quite fun, I have to say. Um, although they're classed as adult Westerns because there is the, uh, the occasional spicy scene, shall we say, um, they're actually not too bad. And the author, um, uh, pays particular attention to historical accuracy, which actually makes them uh, quite a good read. Um, so um, there's about 30 odd in the series, um, of which um, I've probably got just over half now. So um, I'm quite pleased to be getting a little batch of uh, five of those in one hit. Um, now, as you know, what I like to do when I get new paperbacks is just to give them the, uh, the give the tops the once over with my uh, trusty toothbrush here just to see if there is any dirt on them these actually look particularly nice condition so i don't think we're going to have much issue in fact on these but i will just give them out the once over now nah, they look pretty pretty darn mint these to be honest you know and then hopefully i mean they are really nice condition copies yeah it doesn't look as if there's any it doesn't appear to be any uh writing inside these either which is good in fact you could almost say they're virtually unread which is nice isn't it i believe with this particular series it's the tail end numbers that are the hardest ones to get your hands on but of the ones that i've read once you've read the first one you're pretty much you know what to expect um, and they can be read sort of in one one or two sittings because they're not particularly long they're not high literature by any means but they're a bit of fun, so I quite learned. So those, in actual fact, did not need any sort of work at all. Um, I've got a couple more King Penguins in my search to get in the full set of those now. I'm now less than 10 needed. I think I'm probably down to about six or seven now for the set, so I'm almost there. And as soon as I have got the set, I'm going to uh, uh, to do a couple of videos on them, because there's like 70 odd to get through. Um, I've been very particular in making sure that the ones that got issued with dust, dust wrappers, I have got in dust wrappers. Um, so any that I'm still looking for now, I would class as probably quite scarce. So we've got semi-precious stones, and this one I got recently um, as part of a batch of three Egyptian paintings. Real, real nice one. Huh? And the Egyptians' paintings is in a sort of an amateur sleeve, which I will get shot of because. Who knows how long that's been on there, and it's not a particularly great one. It's not bad, it's just not one that I want to keep on the actual books. And then these might have, yeah, Egyptian paintings has definitely got a bit of uh, dust along the top edge there. The other one's not too bad. So uh, let me just give these a little bit of uh, a dust off. And... Uh, I really regret that the uh, King Penguins didn't keep going, but I believe the sales just stopped and they weren't uh, 
they weren't being uh, sold in such great numbers. Um, but, you know, what there is is fantastic. And the fact that there is only 76 in the series now makes it quite an attainable set. Um, much, much harder if you want them in first edition and all industrial wrappings, which I do. Um, yeah, this one just, oh, this is, that's quite nice. It's got a little um, sticker from Foils in, in London. So that's where this one was probably originally sold. Um, it's got a bit of original pen there. Someone paid £15 for this one. It is a scarce one, this Egyptian painting. It's a really, really uh, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous book. Look at that. Corker, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic, but we don't want that um, original price inside, so I'm going to get that answer. So, yeah, £15, very scarce. Well, they're right, it is a scarce one because it's one that's been on my list for a while. And as I said, this one actually I only paid 9 99 and that was with two other first edition King Penguins as well, which I can trade on. So uh, I think I did all right on that because it is a nice one. And um, I know the wrapper isn't mint. But it's not bad, um, and it's definitely fine for me. I know it's a little bit um, darkened, like a darkened spine, but it's certainly not the end of the world. I'll be happy with that. Um, as I said, as I'm nearing the end of the collection now, um, I just want to sort of get get it licked more than anything now. But that's uh, yeah, a really really nice one. And there's another one here: semi precious stones. to rub out there, 1952, this one. It's all manner of subjects with the King Penguins. Certainly some are better than others. Um, the one on the uh, Bayou Tapestry is fantastic. It's a really, really great read. And the complete tapestry is reproduced inside and it sort of explains what's going on. So uh, if you've never uh, read that one, it's actually really common as well, so uh, hard to find in a first edition because it came out during the war, 1943, but um, if you can find the first, ed um, any edition of the Bayou Tapestry, it, you know, as a book alone, it's fantastic, really, really recommended, as well as it being a beautiful wartime King Penguin edition. There we are, so that's a couple of those. Now, one thing I have been very, very lucky to find this month is some fantastic vintage paperbacks, a lot of sci-fi as well. Um, so we've got quite a, a little haul to go through here. Um, and what I'm going to do with these, um, some of them, if I think they need it, I'm going to give the covers a bit of a shine. I think the Renegades are all absolutely mint, so I don't think they really need much going over, but some of these might. So let's have a look at this one first of all. And so this is quite nice, isn't it? From Hiroshima to the Moon. So I managed to buy about a dozen or so books, maybe slightly more, from um, a dealer who I think they might have been his dad's, but what stood them out was that they were in absolutely tip-top condition. Um, a lot of them were American editions, which have been sold in the UK. So this is the uh, the Dell, a Dell Laureate. Um, it's got six shillings, so it would have been you know, 30p in today's money. Um, a real big, thick, huge one. This uh, look at um, uh, the US space race. Really interesting subject, that one. Um, so as I go through, I shall just see if there's any of these needing anything rubbed out. So that one doesn't. But I am going to run the... Um, the polish over it. This is a nice corgi here. Charles Eric Main, Crisis 2000. And yeah, a lot of these are just super, super shaped. So I was very pleased to grab them. Um, I think most of them on the whole are first editions. Um, as I said, you, I don't tend to find corgis, vintage ones out in the wild anymore. They're just not there. So finding them in nice nick is especially good. Uh, Born Leader, J.T. McIntosh. Nineteen sixty-one. That one. This one is uh, an American Ace paperback, uh, which has obviously got imported. Um, Jeff Sutton, really nice, really really nice jacket on that one. As you can see, they're tip-top condition, aren't they? Really really nice. I was uh, very pleased to get these because they don't turn up in such nice condition off so often. Um, usually they're absolutely hammered. Here's another Corgi, Charles Eric Main, uh, High Vacuum. It could happen. Well, there you go. Let's hope not. <laughs> Author of Timeliner, Crisis 2000, and The Isotope Man. 
I do like sci-fi, but one of the things I really like with sci-fi is anthologies, 1959 this one. So science fiction anthologies, even more than horror anthologies, are what I really like. And um, I always tend to pick them up if it's one that I haven't got. So I've got quite a little collection, not sp publisher specific, just all over the place of stuff um, from the 50s to the 70s. This is a nice uh, Corgi from 1961, the fittest. I say these are really, really nice condition. Uh, so um, all these are all from the same collection. This is an early um, door book. And uh, I've got quite a few um, uh, door paperbacks. Uh, most of them are first editions. Uh, I'm not sure about this one, number six. Uh, this is it. Yeah, this is the first edition. Uh, Dennis uh, Warham, one of Donald Warham. He was the, the guy behind it, Donald A. Warham, behind door books. They're quite good. There's a lot to collect. Um, if you want to get them, there's about a thousand, but there's some really, really great stuff in there. Obviously, I've got quite a few with the, the gore books and things like that. Um, I've probably got maybe about 100 in total. Uh, might be worth pulling them all together to make a door video uh, at one point. Uh, now, this is one of a few Ballantine books I've got. Now, the original sort of first 100 or so Ballantine books, I think, are blooming lovely. I love the way that they're made. And um, I've picked up a few this month. So this is one of the ones I've got, Robert Crane. This one's not in the, the mintest of conditions, but it's still... A really nice one and I'm not sure what it is about these Ballantine ones maybe just how they sort of feel in the hand um, they are uh, the paper on here 1954 this one I'm assuming it's a, a first print about first Ballantine um, it feels sort of quite heavy if that makes sense the book is um, uh, you know really sort of robust there's the first there's a listing of the first 50 or so um, obviously they did the John Wyndham's, which is quite nice. Um, and I think out of the first hundred, there is quite a lot of sci-fi in there. Uh, once again, nothing to rub out. It's just a nice copy. I'm just going to put the, uh, the, uh, the polish over it in a moment. Edge. So still collecting the Edge books. There's 61 Edge books in total that were published in the UK. I think there's like 44, 45 in America. So there are a few that are UK exclusives. Um, this is one of the near tail end ones, Terror Tam. So I'll be, I've got the last ones on sort of regular standby in the hope that I'm going to get one quite cheap, but it hasn't happened yet. This one I did, wasn't bad. I think I paid a tenner for this, which including postage, that's actually pretty good for this one. I've seen it go for about £25. Um, nothing inside, but on the back there is a little bit of uh, staining there. So I'm going to give that one a wipe in a minute. Um, here's another uh, fairly early Ballantine, not quite as early as the one we just saw. Um, it's Philip Jose Farmer. So I have started picking up Philip Jose Farmer first editions um, in paperback. Quite an interesting author. Obviously, I read the, um, the fabulous Riverboat series and To Their Scattered Bodies Go, 1961, this one. And that's a fantastic um, series if you've never read those. Um, and I thought, yeah, I might go and start picking up a few. Um, so even his later stuff I really like. The, uh, the Day World series is also really good as well. So all of those are actually really, really nice condition. And none of them have anything to rub out. But I am just going to put the, uh, the dust, the toothbrush here over the spine because sometimes that is like invisible dust and there was a bit that came off there certainly some of these books from the 60s now I mean yeah, that's, uh... now these are sort of smaller format I can see a bit of dust on these particularly on that big thick one there The main thing that attracted me to these was A, they were pretty darn cheap, and secondly, they were in tip-top condition, much, much better than you see books from this period, particularly American ones that have been imported. You just don't see them in that nice condition over here that often. So it was worth uh, going through this chap's collection with a fine tooth comb and picking up everything that I fancied, and that's exactly what I did. And uh, by the sounds of it, they were his father's which he's inherited and he was just knocking, uh, selling them on, on eBay. So that's all those. So once again, I am going to give them a, a going over with my polish in a little bit of time. But we've got some more books 
to look at now. Now I've got another whole pack of decent um, early sci-fi, but I have got three hardbacks this time around as well. We'll do the uh, hardback first edition I got first of all, which is um, this one by James Clavell. Now, you may not know much about James Clavell. He actually only wrote seven or eight proper novels, um, and this being the very first one, A King Rat, which is set um, uh, during the Second World War in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. Uh, but James Clavell went on uh, to write Shogun, which was massively popular in the late 1970s and uh, made him a household name. Um, prior to that, he'd done loads of great stuff, um, including writing the screenplay to one of my favourite films, uh, The Great Escape. Anyway, um, this copy was the first edition, which was, which was good, so I was really pleased to get it. Unfortunately, and it was advertised... It didn't have this as as, as advertised slightly um, in 1963. It did turn up with this, like, ding on the front there, which, you know, was a little bit frustrating, but not the end of the world. It's still such a nice copy, generally, compared to what's out there that I was... Uh, I wasn't too too fussed by that, you know. Um, it was one of those one of those things, wasn't it? Um, and um, yeah, so he goes on uh, to write all um, in the sort of the Shogun saga, sort of all sort of um, uh, novels uh, set in ancient Japan, and they are fantastic. Um, so that is what I um, will look to try and get nice editions of those, but they don't turn up very often, I have to say. So um, really nice ones are scarce. Um, now, the wrapper on this is actually pretty darn good as well. I'm very pleased with that. However, it's in that, it's, it's not a very nice job. It's not nice and shiny. It's one of those ones that's like got some matte finish to it. So I'm going to take this one out of the wrapper that has, you know, it's done its job, it's protected it. But in time, I shall uh, replace it with a really nice wrapper of uh, protected, protected wrapper of my own. And look how bright and vibrant that is, considering it's uh, 60 years old. So uh, I'm yeah, very pleased to have that copy in such a nice wrapper. It's just a shame about that ding on the top, but not the end of the world. Not the end of the world by any means. Um, as you know, with a lot of these videos recently, I've been almost every month picking up a Dick Francis or two. Um, sadly, I've not, not had any luck. None of them have turned up, the ones that I want. So the next one chronologically is, is King... is. Um, a blood sport and I cannot find a really nice condition first edition of that one anywhere and um, I'm also after uh, I think it's is it for kicks I can't remember now but one of the ones I've been after as well just once again waiting for a reasonably priced one to turn up now I've been lucky and I've managed to get two more volumes in the century of series and as you know there's 27 of these i believe um, once again i'm down to less than 10 now for the set it, these are from 1934 1935 1936 i'm particularly pleased to finally get hold of a copy of a century of horror now this one is collected by the dennis wheatley fans because he um he edited this anthology and it is super super rare this one i mean it really really is it's it's probably it's perhaps not the rarest one because there are some copies out there but it's probably the most sought after one because it is dennis wheatley um so i'm going to just run the old it's in a bit of a it's not mint by any means but because it's so scarce i've just sort of grabbed it in in well it's complete, let's put it that way, you know. Um, wrappered copies of this one, and it's an original dust wrapper. Um, well, there's only one available online as we film this, and it's over £300, so it's a bit out of my price range, but I don't mind paying about a tenth of that. Um, it's certainly, though, not the scarcest in the series, and uh, that seems to be a century of love stories, because I've yet to find a copy for that one for sale anywhere um, they are out there it was published i've checked i um, just haven't come across one just yet probably chances are it'll it'll get listed and um i'll pay about three quid for it so it's not exactly in demand it's just scarce it seems to be scarce um so eight pounds fifty someone paid for this at one point so we uh, just pop these paperbacks back Carefully rub out that £8.50 in pencil. Thankfully it is in pencil. 
Yes, I'm really, really enjoying these to dip in and out of, and they've got such great short stories in all manner of subjects. Um, look, there's like the creepy stories, there's strange stories, there's horror stories, there's ghost stories. So there's some pretty good subjects to get your teeth into. Um, one I've been dipping in and out of recently was just the boy story. I had some fantastic stuff in. So there's a little list of some of the ones uh, just there that are actually in... Um, in existence some good stuff for sure anyway this is the introduction by Dennis Wheatley a great writer himself certainly one I enjoy reading and there's the list of all the books there in here and there's some great stuff in it lots of classics lots of stuff that you would recognize um, including one by Wheatley himself the snake so anyway, that's A Century of Horror, and part of the same series, and also actually harder to get than you might think, is this one, it's The Book of the King's Jubilee, and uh, this is quite a tome, this one, look at it, illustrated, it weighs a ton, absolutely fantastic, this is a really patriotic look at uh, uh, the king and queen from 1865 to 1935, which is when this one came out. Um, look at this, W.T. Trelawney Ross from F.E.B., September the 20th, 1936. It's nice when there's a bit of history like that in the book, isn't there? Um, anyway, once again, I'm just going to rub on the top there, because you can see there's a little plume of dust came off there. And that is quite normal with a book that's 85 years old. You're going to get a bit simpler as that. But this one's actually really robust. It's well made. And um, yeah, once again, very pleased to get that one into my uh, Century Of series. So that just leaves one more pack of rather cool paperbacks. And that's these ones here. So we'll go through these. And... Um, they're a bit of a mixture again, but there's some lovely American stuff. There's some really nice uh, uh, Ballantine sci-fi and um, another odd uh, Penguin crime book. So let's zip through these. So this is Belmont sci-fi. So this is an import. So this Belmont is a USA one. It was 50 cents and it was a Belmont double. Um, first paper, paperback publication of two major science fiction novels, both complete. Uh, Giants in the Earth by James Blish and We the Marauders, Robert Silverberg. Great cover on that one. Um, yeah, so these are, I guess, pap paperback originals, the PBOs. Um, maybe from the pulps, possibly. First time in book form, January 1965. Um, these, This one was once again from that same sort of collection I bought recently. As was this. So this was a nice gold medal. And I believe, is this a... A US gold medal or a UK one? I think it might be a US one, you know. Yeah. So this is gold medal 937, and the cents price has been covered with a 2 and 6 British price. Murray Linster, um, 4 from Planet 5. It's nice. Love gold medal books. Here's another Ballantine Philip Jose Farmer, The Green Odyssey. I do love the Ballantine books. I'm definitely going to do a video of those because I've got a few in my collection now. I think they'd be quite interesting. Um, just amazed I've ended up with so many since, you know, well, as you can see, that one was clearly imported into the UK. Um, I think a lot of the Ballantine stuff must have been, you know. Here's another one here. So the Alley God, uh, Jose Farmer again. It's got the, um, the TP on there. So you see that TP, Thorpe and Porter is what it stands for. Um, and they, their logo was a TP, like a, um, uh, that there. And that's three and six. This is another, there's some of the other ones on the back there. Really, really nice, these. Uh, here's another um, door book. This is actually the very first one in the series, Andre Norton. Um, once again, sadly, it's not a first edition, uh, which I am still looking for, but it was better than the copy that I had in, in my own collection. So I'm still pleased to get it, even though I think this is a, yeah, it's a third print, but it's still miles better than the one that I've got. So I can't complain too much. 
Um, a digit. So as you know, I collect digit books. I don't often get them, but this was uh, an odd early unnumbered one. So I didn't want to turn this one down. It's definitely one I haven't got. Uh, White August, John Boland. So quite nice to have uh, have that one. I said quite an early one in the series. That I don't know quite how early, but early. Um, Penguin now. Uh, another Ed McBain. So I'm trying to get all the 87th Precinct novels in USA and UK paperback first edition. I say all of them. There's like 40 odd, but I'm just going to try and get the first 10 to 15 or so. Um, in Penguin, um, I'm almost there. I think I'm one or two short now to do the, the whole lot. And in the, the American ones, um, the same, in fact. Um, so I'm very, very close. This one was uh, from 1963. Really nice, and they've all got the penguin ones are great. And you see the, the face there with the 87th precinct logo down the bottom. They're really, really nice. So uh, they can recommend it. So I'm just going to give these the old dust off treatment. I don't think any of these are too bad, to be honest. There's a little bit of a little plume of uh, plume of dust come off there. I said a lot of it, you know, is um, it's almost like. Uh, Visible to the eye, you know, you just can't, uh, can't actually see it until you do exactly what I'm doing here. So the top edges there actually weren't too bad. Now, the last thing I've got are these. So, once again, these came back, these are from a completely different seller. Um, and I paid four pounds each, um, and there's five books. I paid twenty pound, including the postage, which was a little more than I like to pay for these. But it was nice to get the whole set in one hit. God, they're well wrapped in one hit, and also um, got the nice condition. What I'm going to do? I'm just going to pause there and I'm gonna unpack these, and then we'll be back. Okay, so I've got them out of the bags now, and. Um, well, here they are. Yeah, so it's the Star Science Fiction Stories and uh, edited by Frederick Pohl. And uh, these are science fiction anthologies and they're really, really nice. And they're published by Ballantyne. Um, they're pretty scarce in, in the UK. And uh, I'm very, very pleased to get them. So that's uh, the number 55. This is uh, Ballantyne 96 is anthology number three. I believe this is the uh, this is number four. A little bit later on, number five. In pretty nice condition, aren't they? These, 1959, and the last one is uh, well, this is the first one, Star Short Stories. Yes, they're really nice, those. Um, certainly not for everyone, um, but I like uh, anthologies. And um, while we're here, one of the things I ought to discuss really is about, because I get asked this a lot, is people say to me, why don't you bag your paperbacks? So while I'm given these, the final one so because a couple of these just need a bit of a bit of a polish so I'm going to do that while I talk about bagging paperbacks so I have got in my collection probably I mean I don't know exactly how many but it's in the thousands it's probably probably over 8,000 books now in my collection of paperbacks I mean maybe more I, I honestly I don't know there's a lot and the thing is imagine if you had if I bag the whole lot up, A, the time it would take just to go through and do it. And then the space. So if you got, even if the bags are only a millimetre thick, if you've got a whole run of books, um, it's going to, it is going to take up extra space. There's no two ways around it. Um, not just that, I'm a reader. I like to read the books. So um, because of that reason alone, um, I don't particularly want my books to all be bagged up and I have to go through the uh, the sort of the hassle of unbagging them and rebagging them after I've finished them. 
Um, I would rather just pull them right off the shelf and uh, be able to just dip in and read them whenever I like, you know. So, but I have got some things back. So some of the paperbacks that I've got, um, they are so valuable. I'm never, ever going to read them because it's just, it's too risky to read them. I don't want to damage them, which I know seems ridiculous. But there are some books I'll just read a later reprint or read a read it in the ebook if I really want to read it. Um, a similar situation with comics. So I used to collect comics and I had a run of um, Fantastic Four. And I had Fantastic Four number one, the first ever Marvel, modern age Marvel comic. And um, the, the copy was incredibly delicate. It was falling to bits, really, but it was complete, you know. And the last thing I would want to do is pull that one out to read it when it's readily available as a you know to read as a reprint. So you know, it's such an iconic sort of co comic. So for that similar reason, I would just leave it bagged up. And that's the case with a lot of my rarest books now so if i've got a, a real rare book if it's maybe signed and i need to protect the front cover or um if it's just a rare book that i just don't want to damage or get damaged even accidentally then that is what i'm going to do i am just going to keep it those ones back so the very best ones some of my uh penguin penguin crime books that were published during the second world war which are particularly scarce and there's not many of those around or um, uh, promotional ones and science stuff as I said that's the sort of thing uh, that will end up being bagged but as a general rule I am not going to bag my books um, I mean look at the, the stuff I've done today I've unbagged them because you know I want to read them um, I understand people doing it and on you know super collectible stuff I don't mind yeah I'm, I'm with you there you know that's that's absolutely fine I you know no, not a problem with it, but for me, you know, I, I want to, I want to get them out. You know, um, it's a different thing with toys. There's a lot of toys these days. The trend is to get them encapsulated in plastic, and I have to admit, the ones that I've done that to in my sort of old action figures and stuff, the Star Wars toys, they do look absolutely terrific, absolutely awesome. Um, but it's almost like I don't know. Once they're in there, it's sort of takes away the fun of it i mean i don't know I, it's a bit hard to say but it's simple with books and the fact that you just want to uh you know the whole point is to pick them up and give them a read so uh ultimately that's what i want to do so that is really the reason why not just that i don't want to be paid they're not exactly it's easy to get comic books so the ones that i have bagged up are generally in comic book bags because they're far far cheaper than dedicated paperback bags and um yeah that, that's it that's how that'll do for me you know i just put them in in nice comic bags but um, i know there are people who do, do put them in dedicated comic bags and you know i don't know they are what they are but i would prefer the books to be for me personally out out and on display anyway there we are. So I'm just going to work my way through and uh, get all of these. Uh, I just give them the little polish, so I don't need to keep you around for that. Um, I do hope you enjoy this latest cleaning video. I certainly uh, have been doing a lot of cleaning recently, but predominantly the pan book collection. And I'm, the end is finally in sight. I've got maybe two or three more boxes of 100 books to do. And then I would have processed all the pan books. Now I have started selling the pan books on my doubles that is so i've been through my own collection and i've had doubles and trebles of some of them and i've started popping them onto ebay just to uh get rid of my duplicate copies so if you're interested in pan books and there's some other you know bits and pieces from other publishers they're certainly not um not expensive i'd start the auctions nice and cheap because uh you know I, ultimately i need to get rid of them i've got so much here and they're taking up quite a bit of room that I don't want to uh, you know I don't want it to be here permanently so I want to trade these on um, so if you are interested in seeing what I've got for sale at the moment you know pan book wise is predominantly what I've got up online right now um, then check out the eBay user ID zap retro Z A P R E T R O. Um, as I said predominantly right now 
it's pan books. So uh, if you're not into them, there's there's a bit of other stuff, but not much at the moment. But there will be coming out. Anyway, that's it for today's video. So I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, do please give the video a thumbs up. Um, do please share on social media because uh, I am trying to spread the word of the channel here and get. Uh, get it far and wide if I can and grow it. Um, certainly uh, these videos do seem to be very popular so uh, I shall continue to produce them. Thank you for watching today and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye!